June is LGBTQ plus Pride Month, and in the past 50 years, it has grown into a massive money-making machine with an estimated 1,500 Pride events globally. Even here in our hometown of Washington, D.C., Pride brings in $50 million in economic impact to this city alone. I think it's almost $75 million in the Los Angeles area. Denver, Colorado, uh, $25 million. It's become a month where big businesses can show their support for their community and their employees and try to win over the support of LGBTQ plus consumers by shelling out millions on Pride-related ads, sponsorships, and merchandise. June is also typically a boon for LGBTQ plus owned small businesses and nonprofits. I would say that's probably their most lucrative uh, week of the year. In June of 2019, New York hosted World Pride, which honored the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. Those events maxed out the city's hotel capacity in June, and while an official report has not been published on how much money the event made for businesses in the city, it's speculated to be in the hundreds of millions. But due to the global pandemic, June of 2020 is looking much different. There are about close to 400 Pride organizations right now around the globe who had to cancel or postpone Pride. Most Pride organizers have pivoted to virtual platforms. Interpride, the overseeing body for World Pride, is co-producing an international virtual event called Global Pride. The idea was to have it over a 24-hour um, time frame on June 27 and start from the east and go all the way to the west. This is a first for Pride organizers, so many weren't exactly sure what virtual Pride would look like. As event producers, we all just want to be back to what it has been. Despite hardships, many big corporate donors are still dedicated to the cause and thinking of creative ways to be involved. And some organizations are trying to make sure these corporations are really walking the walk for the LGBTQ plus community, not just using Pride as a marketing opportunity. You look and you find out, you know, that they're doing lots of really, really horrible stuff the other 364 days of the year. How will these virtual events maintain their support of small LGBTQ plus owned businesses like restaurants, bars, and brick and mortar stores, as well as LGBTQ plus focused nonprofits, many of whom heavily rely on the revenue spike in June to keep their doors open and services running? When we don't see pride as we're used to seeing it, um, the reality is that some of what we're not seeing is because things have disappeared, things have actually gone away. June is going to hurt. It's going to hurt for a lot of businesses. Pride events are traditionally scheduled in June in remembrance of the Stonewall Riots in 1969, which is largely seen as the beginning of the modern LGBTQ plus rights movement. The first gay pride march took place the next year in New York City. Heritage of Pride, also known simply as NYC Pride, is the organization responsible for New York's largest pride event and was founded in 1984 when it took over the planning of New York City's pride march and rally. And the movement has been building year after year. Last year, 2019 had over 5 million people, according to the NYPD, attend. But this year, plans dramatically changed. The coronavirus pandemic has led to the devastating cancellation of one event after another, and Pride events have not been immune, but some have decided to host their events online. NYC Pride will be hosting a live broadcast event on June 28th that will feature performances from Janelle Monet, Deborah Cox, Billy Porter, and more. That has opportunity for partners to not only have their advertisements and some curated segments of their commitment to the community, but support the nonprofits that will be a part of that broadcast as well. There will also be an event called Global Pride. Interpride and the event's co-producer, the European Pride Organizers Association, or EPOA, have teamed up with Pride organizations around the world to develop a virtual event that will span 24 hours on June 27th. And with just a few months to put it all together, the organizers have faced some unique challenges. We don't have any historical um, information or data to really back up and support. This is what can be done and this is what's going to happen. 
The event will be streamed live on YouTube and other platforms, according to the organizers, and 300 million viewers are expected to tune in. Although we are in discussions with a lot of different groups um, or organizations about wanting to come on board and partner, um, we are also hopefully looking at donations as a key way to raise funds. The group is still not quite sure how much this virtual pride will cost since they've never done it before, but the majority of the money raised for Global Pride will go towards the group's Solidarity Fund, which was created to support queer events and nonprofits around the globe, especially those in developing countries. The goal is really to raise funds to support a lot of the pride organizations that were affected by COVID-19. In recent years, corporate sponsors have been the financial backbone for many large Pride events. For last year, for example, we were able to bring in a little over $8 million in corporate sponsorship. This organization used to not even make more than a million dollars in one year. In 2019, the cost to produce San Francisco Pride, one of the largest in the United States, surpassed $3 million. That includes permits, contractors, staff, and that bill is usually covered at least in part by corporate sponsors. For San Francisco, that includes companies like Apple, Facebook, Uber, and Airbnb. T-Mobile has been with us for the better part of a decade. TD Bank, who has been with us, I want to say going on 15 years now, in 2015, the most recent data available on the subject, the LGBTQ community had an estimated buying power of $917 billion. So global brands have been eager to position themselves with the community. By working together, we're actually accelerating each other's missions. So of course you are protecting each other's bottom lines. But like most businesses right now, Pride 2020 has been hit hard. Between ticket sales and just sponsors, decreased ability. We are losing out on millions and millions of dollars this year. This year has been a unique struggle for all involved, and Pride organizers had to completely shift their business models. One new offering this year is online ads and sponsorships. Businesses in the travel industry have been some of the biggest supporters of Pride events. They usually have strategic partnerships with Pride organizations, which might include ads, floats and parades, and booths at other events. But this year, some are forced to be a little less generous. With the lack of foot traffic, Pride apparel won't be on display, Pride flags won't be handed out, Pride merchandise won't be right in front of participants. But for NYC Pride, these corporate sponsors are still finding ways to be involved. We haven't had any companies who just flat out said to us, no, we can't support you anymore. Until the 90s, corporate sponsorships weren't a thing for Pride organizers. The marches and rallies were made up of nonprofits and other members of the LGBTQ community. At the time, it was really great that a big bank with a national presence is marching uh, in the gay pride parade. But then at a certain point, it became less about inclusivity and more about a marketing opportunity. As Pride became more commercialized, some members of the LGBTQ community started to wonder if they were benefiting from corporate involvement or if it was hurting the cause. I will give Heritage of Pride the, the credit that yes, they do feature grand marshals and they do sometimes uh, allow some queer organizations that are, you know, fighting for the rights of homeless, um, homeless trans youth and what have you. They do allow them to have some place toward the front, but the problem is those groups get so dwarfed by the presence and the numbers uh, of people on these corporate floats that they just sort of get lost. And I love you guys so much. Apparel brands like H&M, Nike, and Adidas came out with Pride-related products in recent years. H&M launched its first Pride collection in 2018 and donated 10% of the sales price from the collection to UN Free and Equal, whose aim is to build a world where no one has to be afraid because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. But H&M was criticized for working with suppliers in countries that criminalize homosexuality and transgender individuals. Corporate sponsorships are always important. But there has to be a balance, and it's, and it's a balance of, of whose money you accept, but also it's a balance of what kind of pride of place you put those corporations who give you those sponsorships. 
There are companies who sponsor pride organizations around the country that still deal with discrimination issues within their work cultures. Starbucks has been accused of mistreating trans employees, with at least one former employee filing a lawsuit against the company. Nike, who recently released a pride wristband for the Apple Watch, also had a lawsuit filed against it by a former contractor who was reportedly misgendered by co-workers with no action taken by management to correct the issue or educate the staff. Clothing brands Zara and computer company Dell have also been accused of discrimination and are both sponsors of pride organizations. They sort of doubled down on tons of corporate presence um, and tons of, of partying with very little meat about our, 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 the really important issues that all of our communities uh, are facing. Seven members of San Francisco Pride voted to ban Google from this year's events because of discriminatory ad policies and a lack of protection against discrimination on YouTube. In a letter to the San Francisco Pride Board calling for Google's expulsion from the events, protesters wrote, Companies are no longer scared to be seen as pro-LGBTQ. In fact, their participation is a great opportunity for them. We believe that companies should earn that opportunity by proving that they really do stand with our community. To address concerns, YouTube updated its harassment policies to better protect creators and the community. And San Francisco Pride ultimately decided not to ban Google from participating. There are ways to accept corporate sponsorships, but in a controlled manner that doesn't distract from the purpose. And that purpose is still vitally important to the LGBTQ plus rights movement. In 28 states, transgender individuals can still be fired from their jobs or kicked out of their homes without legal ramifications. Pride is global. Pride it can exist in a refugee camp. This is more of an issue of, of stewardship. Walker does recognize the importance of responsible corporate sponsorships. These sponsorships allow for bigger, more economically impactful events. Last year, for example, we held our opening ceremony at the Barclays Center with Whoopi Goldberg hosting and Shaka Khan and Billy Porter. And you wouldn't be able to have that without that corporate support. But this downturn is not just a detriment to Pride events. It's also a devastating blow to local businesses like restaurants, bars, and small shops. This is especially true for LGBTQ plus owned businesses that rely on Pride Month for a major spike in revenue. I would say that's probably their most lucrative uh, week of the year. Justin Nelson, president of the National LGBT Chamber of Commerce, says Pride events bring in tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars for local businesses. Thinking about the ma and ma and pa and pa shops that are in, you know, uh, bricks and mortar that depend on foot traffic, that are looking for reservations, that are offering drink specials, it is going to really hurt those companies. The NGLCC is helping small businesses shift their products or services to better fit the COVID-19 economic landscape. We created a whole virtual pride resource guide for, you know, communities, for corporations, for small businesses, for whomever wants to engage and utilize businesses that uh, will directly impact the LGBT community in a positive way. The nonprofits that support the community are perhaps taking the hardest hit. Nonprofits rely on foot traffic and corporate sponsorships too, but they rely heavily on fundraising events. Now they have to rethink their strategy. We're looking at tens of millions of dollars in lost revenue for organizations like LGBTQ community centers in each of the boroughs, uh, AIDS uh, service organizations, lots of different advocacy groups, uh, and smaller nonprofits too that fill really niche needs of people in neighborhoods. Like so many others, nonprofits like the Stonewall Community Foundation have had to switch up their fundraising efforts in order to stay afloat. We've had a few people do uh, music videos, videos, concerts from their home, uh, and direct the proceeds of those to, to Stonewall Community Foundation. And I think we'll see a lot more of it in the, the weeks and months ahead, especially in June. Nonprofits also face the difficult challenge of contending with for-profit businesses for paycheck protection loans, which have been criticized for not being equitable. Nonprofits are where we turn when we need vital services. It's where we go when we don't know where else to go, right? Um, when we, for whatever reason, have hit rock bottom. And so the fact that that's in the same pool 
with the profiteers in our in our society um, makes it really challenging. And the services provided by nonprofits like the Stonewall Community Foundation are very much needed. Money is not naturally going to fall in the laps of those who need it most, right? There needs to be a really deliberate push um, and a lot of organizing to, and a lot of educating to make sure that that can happen. There is hope in the community that this new way to celebrate and honor Pride Month will make Pride more accessible in the future. How do we still have our march and some of our in-person events, but offer those online programs for those who still maybe can't get there and want to be a part of the event? Probably, you know, this year and maybe even next year, people will be celebrating virtually until there's a vaccine available. We'll look back and think, you know what, do you remember that Pride Month in 2020? you know, when things were crazier than ever and what we lived through and how we're stronger on this side of it.